Hello everyone, my name is Lucas and welcome to another First Impressions video. Today we will be talking about Rainbow Six Siege. Now, I'm going to start this video by prefacing the fact that I am not really a fan of first-person shooters, mainly because I'm just tired of the old uh, versus style of gameplay, you know, bad guys versus good guys, uh, terrorist versus counter-terrorist, you name it. Uh, just to give you a couple of examples, there's a Call of Duty, Battlefield, uh, Counter-Strike, well, the most prominent ones, to be honest, and it's just tiring. It's the same and the same formula all over again. Now, I'm gonna just make it clear. Rainbow Six Siege is exactly the same thing. It's a versus game of good guys versus bad guys, but it feels kind of refreshing, you know? It's a different gameplay there are element well the gameplay remains basically the same you aim you shoot you kill but there are different ways to achieve it there's certain there's definitely certain things in the game that make it more refreshing now i would like i would love to say that i will be able to review the multiplayer part of this game but i will also be talking about this um most of my experience during trying to trying to play the multiplayer component of rainbow six siege was mainly waiting for matchmaking um, the matchmaking seems to be the most horrible thing in this game that I have experienced so far. I was with a friend and we were trying to get into a squad for a multiplayer game. Most of the time we would just spend 15 minutes on the lobby waiting for an enemy team to be ready. I don't know why, I don't know what are the reasons for this, it simply doesn't work. I uh, actually read an article about it saying that there's about a 20% chance that a player logging into the game for the first time will be successful in joining the game. So that is as far as I'm gonna go for my first impressions on the multiplayer mod. It simply doesn't work. Now, as for now, the game only features one uh, co-op gameplay, which is called uh, Terrorist Hunt. You basically gain into a five-person team and you hunt terrorists inside one of the many locations available by the game. Um, there are currently, if I'm not mistaken, three available maps inside the game. Uh, they all have their different style, their different locations, pretty interesting in the term of strategy since there's many ways to approach every one of these maps. Uh, you start the game by picking up um, one of the multiple classes in the, character, in the game, well I wouldn't say multiple classes, I would simply call them multiple game styles for every character in the game. Uh, you get characters that have uh, different special abilities if you could call it. Normally every person will start with a recruit. Uh, the more you play the game, you will earn experience, you will earn this clearance level that so far I have no clue what it is for. It seems to be a static thing for now that has no uh, specific sense. I am assuming that in the future uh, Ubisoft will decide to implement something like uh, unlockables that are unlocked by level, which would make kind of sense to create a progression, a progression feeling inside the game. Now, one play in the game you earn renown and experience. The renown that you use can be used to unlock more characters and even unlock upgrades for your weapons. Um, multiple weapons will have different uh, upgrades like uh, holographic lenses, zoom lenses, um, laser sights, just to name a few. Even the skins are available. Uh, I had a brief uh, look at the skins. Um, and this is of course for every different class. Every class will have different unlocks. Um, interesting part though is that the recruit, which is your base guy, will be separated into the different real-life organiza police organizations like the FBI, the Gestapo, the Spetsnaz, the SAS, and each class of each organization will have different, different weapons. Now, when you go into the actual classes, every class will have differences in what types of special weapons they have. For example, there is one character that is called Termite. He will use special charges that allow you to break through reinforced walls on like regular breach charges. Uh, more interestingly enough, you have characters that can wield hammers that basically one shot every type of barrier. I am not sure if you can use these to knock uh, opponents down. It would be hella fun if you could. Um, there are other classes that can use shields and guns, and there is certainly a lot of variety in the game. Enough to keep it interesting. There aren't even classes that are, you could say, act a little bit more or of a support class of character. As in, you can scout areas. You have um, you have drones that you can use to scour uh, the different locations and be able to mark your opponents. Now, I have to say that, as for now, I am really, really, really impressed by the game. 
um, there is definitely a certain level right there that I was not expecting. The gameplay feels fresh, feels different than any other shooter game out there. Now, it probably is a little bit of an understatement to say that games haven't done this before, but my, my personal experience is the first time I experienced something like this, but I really love how every building in the game is basically uh, something you can destroy, which this means is that basically you don't only have your chargers to be used on the doors or places that are barricaded, but you're also able to destroy walls and places that can create new lines of sight. Now, not every place can be made into a hole, but most of the time you will be able to create a hole from which you can just shoot your way through. Um, it certainly gives the game a little bit of more of a surprise element because you just simply don't know where people are going to come from. Now, going with the assumption that multiplayer mode works probably the sa exact same way as enemies react in the in the terrorist hunt mode um, and if the terrorist defending will have access to different tools as the people who are attacking this will include traps uh, bombs uh, barbed wire shields um, they will be able to barricade doors um, they will be able to barricade windows all of these to prevent the attackers from being able to go past now i mentioned earlier before that you're able to take down the walls you are also able as a defender to fortify some of these walls now interesting enough when you are a defender you are able to fortify certain of the certain walls so your enemies won't be able to breach through that place or create new lines of sight of course, you are able to see which uh, walls are fortified because it will actually be seen on the game. There will be like these little spy, uh, spikes that are basically the anchors of the reinforcement on the wall on the other side. This is also true for trapdoors, which seem to be uh, quite uh, prominent in most of the maps. There's There are pretty easy ways to go from from a higher floor to a, to a lower floor. It's it's really, really, really interesting how you can apply many, many different styles, many different mechanics in order to try to get a strategy out in the game, something working, try to surprise your enemy. Part of some of the tools that uh, defenders are able to access, as I've seen in the roster, not in the actual gameplay, because as I mentioned before, I'm un unable to, to join into a multiplayer game simply because matchmaking is not working, but... Uh, you have access to what I believe is the only medic in the game which is able to revive uh, characters. I am assuming that you are able to revive characters in the concept that they're in a down state nor actually dead. There's certain, certain, certain circumstances in which your character will not die instantly but will be down instead. Um, imagine a little bit like in Guild Wars 2 when, you're, when you die the first time, you're down, players are able to pick you up. Sort of that way, you're, while you're in a down state, you're able to pinpoint your location to other players, you are able to move a little bit, of course you have a certain timer that you have to keep an eye on because you're going to lose blood and you're going to die eventually, and ultimately you're able to hold um, one of the buttons to just try to reduce the timer as much as you can. Try to, you know, have a slow death and hopefully someone will pick you up. Now, as I was saying that er earlier ago, that some of the Defender characters have many, many tools that are very different. Uh, none of them will have breach charges. They will have instead tools like a cardiac monitor and things that will allow you to make... Uh, things that will make defending a little bit more easy, uh, being able to monitor where people are coming from, being able to set cameras, I believe, if you're able. Um, there's also the shields that I mentioned that you're able to put on the floor that you can use to, to use as cover and many other things like that. Now for the actual enemies in the terrorist hunt mode, I have been able to see two instances of uh, different AIs. You have your regular, uh, you could say uh, crook, your bandit terrorist that is just a masked guy with different weapons. I have been able to see that while one of your teammates might be able to scan, they will have different names as ambusher, engineer, uh, and others that makes me think that they will probably they, that the AI pr probably uh, plays different roles too, such as engineers being able to plant bombs, uh, being able to plant cameras. Um, they're probably also the ones that plant the barbed wire and so on. Um, I have been able to see two different instances of the actual models. One is um, your regular terrorist, and one that is probably a suicide bomber. I mean, I have been killed by this guy many many times, and is just. A headache when you get across one of these ones because it's 
hard to kill, they seem to be a little bit more tankier than the rest, and as soon as they get close to you, they just explode and kill everything near you. Mm, I think you, you get a recap at the very end of the match, uh, not at the very end, but when you die, you get a recap at a, a dead camp, where you're able to see how much damage they usually deal, and they're able to one-shot anything. Uh, lucky enough, if you're able to land a couple of headshots, they can die pretty, uh, pretty fast. Uh, barbed wires, there you can you can destroy them with a melee attack when you're on top of them. Uh, if you are the sledge, you are able to one-shot them. Uh, same goes for the C4 charges, you're able to shoot them. Uh, interestingly enough, the, the C4 charges you can hear when you're close to them, so it's pretty rare that it catches me by surprise. Most of them it has to be like on the fray of a battle where I'm just storming in into a place and you just lost track of your environment. Uh, you don't hear the beep until it's too late and just explode on your face and you're gone. Now, overall, I have to say that the game is really, really interesting. Uh, I'm really excited to see what else the game is going to have, what else is going to offer. I'm excited to see what is going to happen with this clearance level, how is it going to affect, how is it going to affect the game itself. Um, they might rebalance things a little bit. I've heard uh, from a reliable source that they will be bringing a lot of DLC uh, into the game, free DLC on top of that, on, on top of that, that will include new maps. The free maps, of course, which is the most exciting thing. Um, I'm really, really uh, excited about this game personally. I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a fan of first-person shooters. The last game that I played was Borderlands 2, and that's an entirely co-op game. But this is something different. Well, it might be also part of the fact that I am only playing co-op mode that also makes it that exciting. I will. I, they have extended the bet, the close beta until the 4th of October, so I'm still going to try my luck, see if I can try a little bit more of the multiplayer mode, maybe update this video accordingly, um, see what happens. So, thanks for watching this video, guys. If you have any comments about Rainbow Six Siege, just leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much. My name is Lucas, and I'll see you next time.